The company had more luck in Washington, where Thiel relied on the connections he'd made at PayPal and courted many of the key architects of the Bush administration's surveillance-heavy approach to the war on terror. These included John Poindexter, the Reagan White House advisor who'd been convicted of lying to Congress about secret arms sales to Iran. Poindexter had appealed the conviction, won, and resurrected his career when Vice President Dick Cheney recruited him to the anti-terror effort. Poindexter was the mastermind of the Bush administration effort known as Total Information Awareness, or TIA, which involved gathering huge amounts of data and trying to find patterns that might suggest terrorism. It was, to civil liberties advocates, a privacy nightmare, since it would amount to surveillance of all Americans, and it was officially shut down in 2003. Poindexter found Teal and Carp arrogant, but he liked their idea and was impressed with the visualizations they showed him. Poindexter's involvement as an informal advisor helped Palantir make more contacts in Washington. Teal and Carp befriended George Tenet, the recently departed Bush administration's CIA director, and recruited investors at InQtel, the CIA's venture capital firm, which put in $2 million based on a rough prototype in 2005. The only other major investor was Thiel himself. Once again, he put some of the capital up through the Roth IRA. Palantir eventually set up an office in Facebook's old headquarters on University Avenue in Palo Alto and rebranded itself with a privacy focus. The company would still help the government mine data, potentially violating the privacy of ordinary Americans, but it added software to keep track of which information was being accessed and by whom. The system, which came to be known as Gotham, would create a record each time an analyst looked something up, theoretically discouraging the government from using it to look up details on a private person, and, if abuses did occur, making audits possible. This was CARP's strategy for addressing the mounting civil liberties backlash against the Patriot Act. He was adamant that Palantir would not succeed without a strategy to protect civil liberties. In later years, Thiel would strongly imply that he'd been in favor of the privacy approach from the start, but, in fact, he was skeptical at first, arguing that no one would believe that a product that claimed to preserve privacy would actually work. Carp won him over, and Palantir's privacy paper trail would become central to the company's pitch to the public. Carp seemed sincere, but it was never clear how seriously clients took the idea. One of Palantir's former engineers recalled meetings during which government clients would suggest trying to use the database to look up an ex-girlfriend immediately after hearing the whole privacy spiel. Palantir employees would never object to these requests, this person said. Instead, they would remind the clients that searches were logged, and then allow them to look up whoever they wanted, no matter how flimsy the pretext. Palantir executives pushed ethical boundaries in other ways,